it is indeed my pleasure to welcome the Food and Agriculture Organization representative, uh, Trinidad representative to uh, the UN, uh, Dr. Listra Fletcher Paul. Doctor, thank you so much for coming in. Great to see you this morning. Thank you very much for having me, Renny. It's a pleasure to be here. It is great. Here, you brought the sunshine in with you. <laughs> love, love the attire. Thank like, you. hello, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, it brings a sort of optimism. Folks are going into the Oval right now. Hopefully, the West Indies will do good against Pakistan. Yeah, right. <laughs> doctor, doctor, let us talk about what we're here to do. Climate change is food security. We know that. The world's poorest, many of whom are farmers, fishers, and pastoralists, are being hit hardest by higher temperatures and an increasing frequency in weather fluctuation. The question is, that's a wonderful, big uh, thing to say. Is that relevant to local farmers, many will ask? Absolutely. If you think about, let's say last year, or even now, um, the drought, the high temperatures, mm -hmm. it means that not only is there the high temperature, but availability of water. Water is an essential component of the production system. Mm -hmm. And um, climate change also has associated with it the um, drought. And so your farmers are complaining. They complain every year that there's not enough water for mm -hmm, production. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, absolutely, it is being felt. In addition to which, there's the other extreme of more water than you need, especially in times of the hurricane season, mm -hmm, etc. Mm -hmm. We have seen the floods that have taken place in central Trinidad from time to time. And that goes along not only with um, the loss of crops, loss of livestock, infrastructure, farmers are feeling it. And um, the climate change is not only in terms of that, but we're seeing a shift as well in terms of when the, 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 the drought is coming, when the rainfall is coming. Last year, for example, with Hurricane Matthew, mm -hmm. I remember as a child, we used to say this thing, June too soon, this is the rhyme, July stand by, August come it must. And then they said, October all over. Well, you went that really fast, but I like the sound <laughs> of that. Let's do that again. That that is a nice way. Okay. It, that's almost like, like if you're cramming for school. <laughs> You've got this thing. You can you do that again for me, doctor? So June too soon. June is too soon. July stand by. <laughs> yes. August come it must. September remember. October all over. And Hurricane both. Matthew hit in October I when it was you. supposed to be all I over. You. So there's a shift mm -hmm. as well as the availability of um, water and the high temperatures. It's affecting the, the production system. We in Trinidad and Tobago have a, 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 a unique uh, need right now because sustainability uh, from the land is important uh, in the context of we importing. We cannot keep importing yes. like that. So that is one aspect of it. But there is a global picture uh, as, as a representative to the United Nations. How prohibitive is it to try to feed the world uh, increasing population? What is it expected by uh, 2050? Uh, 9.6 mm. billion people exactly. expected. And the food chain is getting more and more difficult. I believe the next battle is going to be for water. That is going to be, Absolutely. you know, um, but uh, how, how difficult is it from a global perspective trying to meet the demands of this anticipated 9.6 billion people by 2015? Okay, you have to think of it in terms of not only the production levels. In a number of countries, production levels are going down because a number of the, there's an aging population in agriculture. Uh, mm. The young people, many young people are not interested in agriculture. So you have that. You have the availability of land for agriculture because there's competition. You mm -hmm. have an, an increasing population. The population is expected to get to over how many? Nine, ten billion by 2050. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about, and that's competition for housing, land for housing. So to, to meet that demand, it means you have to increase your production and mm -hmm. your productivity, more importantly. The absence of young folks getting involved in, the, in this, uh, Dr. Listra, uh, Flesher Paul, my guess, the absence of young folks getting involved in this means that more emphasis and more educating has to happen from the technological standpoint. Speak to that, please. Absolutely. In fact, if you want to get the young people involved or interested in agriculture, you have to show them the technology part of it because agriculture has been associated, especially in the Caribbean, with slavery. It has been associated with hard work, backbreaking, no returns, you know, the weather is, as you say, the, anything could just wipe out your crops. Mm -hmm. So you have to show the people that it's making money, it's a business, mm -hmm. and also that it can be done using technology. So the, the young people who are becoming interested in agriculture now are those who are using the technology. Mm -hmm. They are looking at greenhouse agriculture, which is a controlled environment. They're looking at um, using the, the apps that are available on your, your computer to get information 
on the best technologies to be used. For example, in the old days, you had to rely on extension officer. Now you can go on the internet mm -hmm. and get that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it means that you know, if you want to get the young people involved, and even the, the older ones who are involved, you have to show them ways to increase their productivity. It means research and development is a very important part of the work that we have to do. We are here to talk about um, the planting of a tree and a running of a race, all leading up to this big event in October. We are laying the foundation here, and we just spoke about technology. But en route to that explanation you just gave, you mentioned greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Greenhouse gas is a serious uh, problem. Greenhouse gas emissions in the world, uh, they contribute from livestock is serious. What is it? Mm -hmm. Two-thirds uh, of the emission in the world today. What mm -hmm. kind of education are we passing to our, f our farmers? Because when you speak agriculture, unfortunately, sometimes folks simplistically take it as, as, as planting and trees Absolutely. and so on, but it's all encompassing. So this yes. question of greenhouse gases, explain to us, please, Yes, doctor. because of course the greenhouse gases get trapped it, it is contributing to the high temperatures, the increase mm -hmm. in temperatures. Mm -hmm. So, and, and some of the sources of that emission will be the livestock mm -hmm. effluent. So, um, you, to, to deal with that, you have to, to promote things like composting, the use of biogas mm -hmm. for energy, for example, ex, um, renewable energy sources. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use the effluent from the, the livestock to produce bioenergy, which mm -hmm. can then be fed back into the farming system. Um, the livestock production system has to be a lot more efficient. So there's a lot that can be done all along the production chain, which can reduce the, um, the emissions and so help the farmers to contribute to, you know, as they call it, climate change mitigation. We've got a short window here, but you're making a lot of germane points. Uh, this area of getting young youth into agriculture, it is one thing to have them excited with the apps and so on, but as you said, is making it um, something viable for them to meet this world that demands that you make the money right now. Mm -hmm. The investment from, um, from governments in the world is going to be pivotal in this because, uh, and I do want to ask you this question, on the on the heels of, uh, of the, 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 the thinking that we need to feed the world, there is this um, <clears throat> manufactured food issue. Uh -huh. uh, GMO, I think it's yes, called. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is an issue. How big a problem is that at the world body? You being the Trinidad and Tobago representative to the Food Agriculture Organization, my guess is Dr. Listra Fletcher Paul. How yes. big a concern is that GMO question? Okay, so the genetically modified um, organisms. And so that is an important issue, mm -hmm. um, especially because some of the producers of this kind, especially the seeds, um, the seeds have in them what they call a, a killer germ. That it, it, in, other, in other words, you have to keep buying the seeds from the producers of the seed, the manufacturers mm. of the seeds. In the old days, a farmer would grow his corn, let's say, and then he would keep a little bit of the seeds from the previous crop so that he can grow it again. Now they have these killer genes in them, mm -hmm. which means that you cannot produce, reproduce this, the, the, um, the corn or whatever, the soya bean or whatever crop it is. It is one of the reasons many governments in Africa have uh, riled up against Bill Gates' uh, so-called assistance mm -hmm. to devel the developing because, world because of yeah. the proprietary nature of these yes, grains you're it, talking and, about. And it also, it also perpetuates mm -hmm. the dependency. <laughs> Independency mm -hmm. syndrome, mm -hmm. especially of our small farmers. Mm -hmm. But as an, uh, but the, you know, having said that, though, genetic modification has its place in certain areas of um, of agriculture mm -hmm. because some of these genetically modified organisms um, help farmers to, for example, deal with pests and diseases because they create crops which are. Resistant. have a resistance mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the particular. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it from both sides of it. And as the United Nations, we give both sides of the story. We are saying, yes, it creates a dependency, but there are other aspects of the science which could be very beneficial to the country in terms of disease um, prevention, etc. So we give both sides, and at the end of the day, the country has to decide what is best for the country itself. As my time uh, keeps galloping behind me, I want to take us into, appropriately, um, the 5K run, which <laughs> <laughs> I, I love these segues. <laughs> so we are, we are talking about two things happening. One is a tree planting ceremony. Tell us about that. Okay, so that tree planting ceremony takes place on, Tuesday, on the 5th at um, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. and we'll be planting a balata tree. 
And there's also the tree relay where the tree is then passed on from one school to the other. Okay. The so, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's going to be exciting. Where is yes. this taking place? At the at the um, botanical the botanical garden. Oh, botanical right. garden. All right. Okay. And then on the eighth, it's the run for food, which is the major event, which is being held with in collaboration with Massey Holdings. Is know, that a, a real run or a fun run? It's. For those who can manage it, it's real. <laughs> For those like me, <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> I see the PC director isn't here with us, and he looks pretty fit. He's going to take it yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. You and I are going to get the bag raised. Well, and I, make have, <laughs> I have a bet with somebody that he's going to eat my dirt. <laughs> oh, to, 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 to. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> so we've got something there. Yes, this so is the 5K run. That starts at 4, and, and at 1 o'clock, there's the farmer's market. And, the, and, and, and this is taking place at Queen's Park Savannah? Queen's Park Savannah, opposite TG. Friday. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. And that is on the 8th. Now, it's all leading up to October. Yes. Uh, so tell us what happens uh, uh, in October. What are we, what is the sort of projection, the benchmark we have for ourselves okay. for Trinidad and Tobago? Okay. October 16th is World Food Day. Mm-hmm. And that's the day we commemorate the founding of FAO. Okay. Um, and there's a theme that goes with World Food Day. The theme last year was climate change is changing, food and agriculture must change too. This year, the theme has not been decided as yet. Mm-hmm. But there's a World Food Day committee comprising representatives from the ministries of agriculture, trade, um, the Chamber of Commerce, Ministry of Education, the mm. 4-H Club. Um, so, and then, of course, we are FU, we are involved as well. And they are planning a number of activities around World Food Day. So depending on what that theme is, then there will be a more, um, we'll get more, more details about mm-hmm. what will be the big event for World Food Day. I love the public-private uh, um, collaboration absolutely, that's going on here. Absolutely. This is very necessary for you all to move forward. Now, folks who are interested, as far as the Botanical Garden on April 5, folks can just drop in and look yes. at this relay, all right? As far as the run is concerned, uh, the yes. Eat Dust r- run, <laughs> <laughs> as far as that is concerned, what folks have to sign up there? Yes, there's a registration um, that takes place online. Unfortunately, I can't remember the the online. Um, okay, there's a registration. Yes, we'll get yes. that information for uh-huh. them. And mm-hmm. you, can, you can also call the Ministry of Agriculture. The ah, Ministry of Agriculture and, and would, would be a good place. Mm-hmm. And Massey's also yeah. will provide you with and that we information. And we would be able to provide you with the information. Of course, you know we are very very happy uh, that you, Dr. Lystra Fletcher Paul, is the representative of uh, Fortune that in Tobago on the Food and Agriculture um, Body of the UN. How long have you been a bit in that capacity? I have been. Um, in mm, FAO mm. for over 20 years, mm. but I've been the representative for Trinidad and Tobago for mm. about two years and four months. In conclusion, we are glad to have you there, and we salute you for that. In conclusion, are you satisfied with the, uh, the level of education that's being passed on to, one, our farmers, and two, the citizenry? Because that, it, it, that is how you get it. If we get people to understand the need to produce, then they'll understand the imperative of buying local. Exactly. If, if, if we can um, get that message in clearly, then we start providing the incentive Absolutely. for farmers, whether they be young and old. You specifically yeah. said there's an a, a, a acute challenge for young folks to get involved, but farmer survivability, however, is in total. So yeah. the question remains, are you happy with the level of education uh, that's being passed no, on? No, in a word, no. We have to start teaching our young people the importance of eating healthily from early and eating healthily means that you rely less on food that is imported Mm. and eat more of what you grow Mm. Mm. Um, in fact the other day i was listening to your program and your co-host was saying you know um, show you care, eat from here. Yes, yes, yes that, <laughs> and that, that I like that. Slogan, Michelle slogan. I yeah. like that because <laughs> it means that it's showing that you understand. You don't know what you're getting in the food that you bring in. Mm-hmm. So the whole food safety is. You look at what has happened with the corned beef. You know, so the thing mm. is that we have to teach our young people the importance of eating healthily, and that has to be inculcated from early. Healthy, gotcha. lifelong eating habits. Mm. We have to link our local farmers mm. to school feeding mm. programs. We have to teach agriculture in schools from very early. Guyana, for example, which is one of the countries which is self-sufficient in food. Agriculture is a subject compulsory mm. on the curriculum mm. from primary all the way up to secondary school. Everybody has a school garden. Everybody has a garden at home where they're growing what they're eating. Oh. So they're they talking, they're walking the talk. 
I hear you. Comrade mm-hmm. Forbes Wilhelm must be smiling. <laughs> uh, by the way, that um, that um, uh, um, website you go to for information for this program is agriculture.gov.tt. Agriculture.gov.tt. Get up there on the front page. You will see the information, and you're good to go. Doctor, uh, Doctor, I thank you so much. Listra, Fletcher, Paul, thank you so much for being here. Did I get that? Um, uh, get that clear that. You get a chance to get up to the UN and and, and, and and sit with them and put an input from from this side of the world so they yeah, understand. We have we have regional conferences. Our regional conference this year for Latin America and the Caribbean is actually being held in the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. It's the first time it's being held in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And that regional conference, the information there feeds into our big conference in our headquarters in Rome. So I Doctor, get there from time to time. It is great to see you. My pleasure. It is being good here. to have you here. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to you at the race. I will be coming to watch Mr. West, who is my upcoming guest, by the way, run. I will be coming to see you allow your competitor to eat dirt. You're not, going, dirt. To eat my dust. You're not no, going to eat my dust. No, I, whatever you're running in, I'm running in that too. <laughs> I'm making sure I'm in good company. You notice how I disassociated myself from Indeed. Mr. West? He looks like he can run. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much. Have yeah, yourself a wonderful pleasure. day. Thank, thank you so much.